Good evening and welcome to the special presentation on WOSN Sports. It's Putnam County League Boys Basketball. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Jerry Snodgrass as we get set for a battle of league unbeatens. Kaleida coming in under the tutelage of Ryan Steck. Schulte at 11-4, and but 4-0 in the Putnam County League. They'll be playing host to Keith Utendorf's Ottaville Big Green squad coming in at 13-3, and 3-0 in the PCL. And Jerry, anytime you get a couple Putnam County League schools together, it's going to be a good one. And we've got a couple of pretty good teams. I think Teams we really do. You know, first of all, I love coming to the PCL games. In fact, uh, we had several other people on this game doing color tonight. I called in and canceled for every <laughs> one of them so I could be here. I actually was on the soccer district championship game between these two schools, and most of them played. Yeah. And I remember saying at that time, because they were so athletic, and that's what makes this so good, I could not wait to come to this game. And really tonight, Doug, I think it's a lot of speed versus size and strength. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah, Ottaville comes in, not the biggest team on the floor. 6'3 is as tall as they go, and that's Alex Siever, who's averaging 10 points and four rebounds. But when you look at their team stats, these guys get boards, and it means they're doing some work, having to scrap to do it. Somewhere along the line, I'll make sure I throw in the the rebounding terms and everything else because, you know, I, that's dear to my heart. You know, I, high school, I had a, uh, about a six centimeter vertical jump and uh, learned how to rebound. You know, learned the concept that if you're a rebounder, you just know that every shot's gonna be missed. And if you have that concept, but you throw in for Audeville, the fact that they are so athletic, that's what makes them good rebounders. And for the meantime, before Kalina, you've got two very good players in the Putnam County League. Evan Steckschulte comes in averaging 14 points per game. Jaden Smith at 12 points per game. He also grabs five rebounds. Uh, and a lot of senior leadership. They're going to start five seniors tonight. These are guys that have been here, been through these Putnam County League battles before. And even with that, you know, those two pretty prolific scores. I mean, they're not, you know, in the 20s, but they have very good balance. And when you watch them, you'll see that all of them can score. I've seen so many of their players and some of the video I watched, you know, hit threes when they needed them. So they're all capable, and that makes you such a good team. Now it said that Kaleida, a veteran team, well, Ottaville is too. They actually start four seniors and a junior. So Michael Turnwald's the, the only underclassman, quote unquote, to uh, be in the starting lineups. So let's talk about the starting lineups, starting first with the home team, Kaleida. We'll go with this look. Number three, Evan Steck, Schulte, a 6'3 senior, averaging 14 points per game. Number 11, Drew Fersh, a 5'11 senior, 6.4 rebounds per game. He also dishes out four assists. Number 13, E.J. Miller, a 5'11 senior, eight points and three rebounds per game. Flanked by number 22, Jaden Smith playing guard, a 6'3", senior, 12 points, 5 rebounds per game. And number 24, Ethan Warnicke, a 6'2", senior, 8 points, 4 rebounds per game. For the Ottaville Big Green on the road tonight, so they'll be going with this lineup. Number 3, Grant Lease, a 6'0", senior, 1.2 rebounds per game. Number 12, Kellen Schlagbaum, a 6'1", senior, 14 points and 5 rebounds per game. Number 22, Alex Siever, a 6'3", senior, who's averaging a 10 and 4, also an 80% free throw shooter. Number 23, Carter Horseman, a six-foot senior, eight points, six boards per game. And number 24, Michael Turnwald, a 5'9 junior, 10 points, two rebounds per game. And that is how they will line up tonight. We'll take a break. When we come back, it'll be time to tip things off here at the home of the Kaleida Wildcats. You're listening, you're watching, listening, and we'll go back to my radio days, Jerry. <laughs> you're watching high school basketball right here on WOSM. Welcome back to the Richard L. Quarter Crack Sport at Kaleida High School. Doug Jacobs, Jerry Snodgrass with you here on WOSN as we get set, re get ready for some Putnam County League basketball. Kaleida playing host to Ottaville. Again, Kaleida coming in at 11 and 4, 4 and 0 in the PCL. Ottaville, they are a 13 and 3 mark overall, 3 and 0 in the PCL. Least famous recipe chicken in Lima, Wapak and Delphus is tonight's, uh, one of tonight's presenting sponsors. They can help with all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken Home Style happens here. And tonight's game is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe. As I just said, Home Style happens here. They're on the free throw and the presenting sponsor. They're pulling double duty. We love them. Lee's, you have the best chicken strips barred up. Absolutely. Right, there we go. 
<laughs> Let's talk basketball now and not my misinterpretation of the, <laughs> the sponsor sheet, Jerry. You look at keys to this game. What do you need to see early out of both squads? Well, you know, first of all, we take a look at Kaleida. You know, as I said, they have size, you know, against that speed, but they need to win the turnover battle. That's something Ottaville does very well. They press well. They rely on a lot of their scoring from turnovers in their press. They have to win the turnover battle. Two, they have to stop the penetration. Ottaville, again, I said, is very athletic. They do go to the hole a lot, every one of them. They've got to stop that penetration. And three, and I think this is one of the biggest keys, they have to own the glass. They have to rebound the basketball, and, and that's so key. When you're looking at Ottaville on the other side, one, it's interesting uh, how they work on analytics so much. They've got to win the possession battle. And they get that off of a lot of steals. Two, yeah. they need to pressure and create transition baskets. And three, their bench has to contribute. They play a lot of players. Twelve players, Doug, have played in at least 12 of their games. So, again, big key for them. That's an impressive number. When you play so hard, like uh, when you play as fast as Audeville tends to do, you need those legs. So we'll see how that bears out tonight. Audeville won the tip. Obviously, here we go. Smith passes over right side to E.J. Miller, who goes in from the right, puts it up and in for two. Well, they're so they're so good offensively, the big green. They move the ball extremely well, and that when you've got speed and reverse the ball so well, boy, that makes it tough to defend. I'll we'll see Audeville come out man-to-man -man defense here as Kaleida works it around the perimeter. And we got a loose ball at midcourt. Audeville's gonna dump our dive on top of it, but that's Hunted down, and that's a nice take by Michael Turnwald. Just did a good job anticipating that pass was going to come from the floor and putting him to a spot where he's going to draw that foul. Well, you know, early on, you're really seeing that pressure by the big green. And as I mentioned, you know, about, you know, winning the possession advantage, and on the other hand, for Clyde winning the turnover battle, uh, that's, that's starting to tell, you know, that's a little sign right early on this. Shot up, no good. Rebound going to be pulled down. Kellen Schlugbaum. Schlugbaum brings it down to the floor. We know he's got speed from the soccer field. You know, and I mentioned that about some of these kids playing soccer, and the thing I remember about that so well, they were just good athletes. And I think, yeah. you know, that, you know, I can say they're good basketball players, they're good, they're good soccer players, they're good athletes. Nearly drug his pivot foot there. Three is up from Horseman, knocks it down from the left side. Carter Horseman, his first triple of the ball game, makes it 5-0 on the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard. Well, and again, we you know I mentioned that so many of those players are capable of shooting from outside. That's a nice pass into the paint, and we'll get the foul will be called. Out of the lobbying for a traveling violation. That won't be it, but will it be a shooting violation? Will be the call's true first head position underneath. You know, and, and not that you want to give up. Nobody's trying to give up e easy baskets, but when you're a pressing team and a running team like uh, Ottaville, you know, you're going to give up some of those shots sometimes. Yeah. I mean, this time it was a foul, but, you know, it was inside. The second time they've been inside like that. Foul was on Schlagbaum, his first, team second. Grant Lees has the other. Pass into the lane, turnaround jumper taken by E.J. Miller just off the mark, tipped out of bounds. It'll be Ottaville going back the other direction. But, you know, on that even, too, you know, that cut across the paint like that, Grant Lees was trailing him, but when he turned and shot that, he was right square in his face, and that makes it a so much harder shot. Pressure and looking for the half court trap. Kaleida now they have numbers. Ottaville does. Grant Lee's turned down the three. Now they'll feed it into the paint, get it to Horseman. Turns to his right, up off the window. Good for two. And I guess that's why he turned it down. It's good patience. <laughs> yep. Want to get better. Want, want to be, get a better one. Seven nothing. Ottaville jumps out to an early lead here. With five and a half left in the first quarter. First at the right side of the volleyball line. That's what you can do when you're a pressure team, Jerry, is really extend that man-to-man -man defense you, out towards the volleyball line, even towards midcourt, and we've got a foul off the ball. We've got an Ottaville player almost all the way into the uh, into the stands over there on the, our right side. Yeah, I, I, I did not see, I think he was holding him, I think, on the cut. Oh, it's going to be a double foul. Yeah, okay, he did hold it. The official did signal that early on, right away. Evan Steckshalty picks up Kaleida's first foul. Third foul for Audeville. Alex Seaver picks up his first. He got a little tangled up under there. 
Battle of 224. Sometimes you're, you're going to muscle, you try to muscle some way in, into the paint. Well, and that's a good job of the officials. You know, A.J. Kramer, Mike Magoo, and Brian Fuqua that called that early to try to get control of this. Horseman, the steal over to Schlagbaum for three. Won't go. Rebound pulled down. E.J. Miller will bring it back down the floor now for the Wildcats. Passes off right side. Got Rudy. it again. Boy, yes, they did. Well, being inside the paint, rough going so far. About halfway through this first quarter, Jerry. Well, you know, the one defensive skill that you're always teaching is to deny and take away cutters. They're taking them away. <laughs> they used to tell us to knock down the cutter. That's a nice shot to get Kaleida on the board from Jaden Smith on the, along the baseline. Makes it a five-point game, 7-2 in favor of Audeville. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, just under 13 points a game. Good shot in the corner. And much needed for Kaleida to get the scoring going. Get back within five here in this contest. Certainly a lot of basketball, but you don't want to get down double digits early. Schlagbaum kicks it out left side. Lease. Give it up to Turnwald. Turnwald into the paint. Falling down, but he's able to get the pass away. Triple penetration made by Horseman. Horseman's pass is stolen. Ball knocked away, and then Schlagbaum comes up with it. Passes left side. Horseman for three off the rim. No good. Rebound. Pulled down by Drew Fersh of the Kaleida Wildcats. And that's something they've done so well all year long, Audeville, is, you know, they'll get that turnover, and, and they've got, you know, free reign to shoot it. I mean, they're getting the turnover, turn it into points. Lob pass down underneath, going up high to get it off the glass, putting it up the window is Evan Warnicke for his first two. And it's back to a three-point game, 1-2-2 two, two pressure by the Wildcats. You know, I watched Warnicke uh, on, on video, and I thought he had such great footwork. And inside like that, he does. For his size, uh, just tremendous footwork. Michael Turnwald tried to drive lane right side there, got tangled up. The ball deflected off of him and out of bounds. He'll come out of the lineup. And a substitution for the big green, leading by three. You see that the big green just playing man-to-man. -man. No real full court pressure yet. Yep, they'll pick up about three-quarter court and just make you work all the way up the court. Ball given to first. First over to the left side. Pass along the baseline. And that one was knocked out of the hands of Jaden Smith as he tried to pass it back out to the top of the perimeter, then deflected out of bounds by Carter Horseman. You know what? Both, team, both, excuse me, both teams do so well. They play such good help side defense. You think they're in a zone. You're watching this and you're thinking, hey, it must be in a zone. No, they're just helping so well on that weak side. That's why you're going to see the ball reversed quite a bit. And that's where the opening is. Pass to the right corner. Give it to Jaden Smith. He's going to spot up. Won't go. Rebound. Battle four and one by Keaton Schnipke, who just came into the lineup for the green. Hustled down the floor by Kellen Schlagbaum. That's a nice pass underneath and finds his man in Carter Horseman. Horseman's having himself a pretty good first quarter. He's got seven of the nine for the big green. Yeah, and it's not like you can really do something any different against him. I mean, he's just, he's earning his points. Five point advantage once again for Ottaville. E.J. Miller, left side, works it around the perimeter over to the left. They get it to Brady first, who's just checked in. Bounce pass underneath, and that's a, just a really good job by Keaton Schnipke to see that one coming, got around his man and didn't make contact while he was able to pry the ball away. Well, that was a ball side cut that was taken away. That's why earlier we saw so many people hitting the deck because <laughs> those cuts to the ball are really being taken away by the big green. And Slug, well, I'm going to have a shot blocked, but right there for Schnipke, his shot blocked. The Wildcats not letting it come easy in the paint here. They lost track of Slugbot as he went out to the left corner. Shot up, no good. Rebound hauled in by Brady first. Long pass down the floor. Steck Schulte. Steck Schulte coming in from the right. Won't go. But will draw the contact and go to the line to shoot two. This is going to be the fourth foul. Make it the fifth foul on Audeville here in the first quarter. Well, you know, I mentioned in the pregame, you know, of speed versus size. I should have mentioned, because it's been true all year long, the Wildcats can run, too. Yes. And they do a pretty good job of it. Steck Schulte goes to the line. First free throw is up and good. And, and I should say, a lot of that is because both of these teams so well coached. They're so well coached. I think everybody in the PCL, they have great coaches here. Well, these two teams right there at the top as a result of that. Coaching from Ryan Steck Schulte from Kaleida and Keith Utendorf for the big green. Second free throw is up and good. 
for Evan Steck Schulte and it pulls the Cats back within three, nine to six on the Lee's famous recipe chicken scoreboard. And they've played that, Kaleida has played that three quarter court one, two, two, and it's kind of one of those just let you fall asleep, you know, and let yeah. lull you to sleep in it. They're not gonna trap out of it, you know, unless they're right at the sideline. Turn wall down the lane, right side, pinned against the backboard. Crashing on that was Jaden Smith, but Audeville wound up with it. Smith tried to pass it in, or pardon me, typically tried to pass it back in, won't go. They're gonna get a foul yeah, on the rebound caught. attempt, yep. Looks like they're gonna get Evan Steckshaldy. That's a big foul for Kaleida, because there's a minute 31 left in the first quarter. That's his second. And you, and you know where he makes such a difference is, is on the boards. And he's 6'3", yeah. but on the other end, on the offensive end a little bit ago, he was right there for that offensive rebound. He just knows. He's that kid that has that sense. Big Green trying to inbound it, able to get it in to Seaver. Puts up the three, won't go. Rebound hauled in by Fersh for the Wildcats. He'll opt to bring it back down the floor himself. Slows it up. And it puts the half-court offense into motion. And again, you just look at Otterville following you all the way back out to the timeline. You see that good denial defense even on the perimeter, forcing them out another foot or two. Smith lofts one over right side. E.J. Miller wants to go low to Warnicky. Warnicky <laughs> trying to find something. There's people hitting the deck again. Shot up down the lane right side. Smith won't go. Rebound tipped out of bounds. It'll be on a field ball going back the opposite way. You know, you see those bodies flying, everybody. Nobody's really screaming foul. I mean, no. but but at the same, it's just cutters that are being taken away, and uh, that's just because of the great ball side defense or help side defense uh, by Ottaville. And on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard, again, it is nine six in favor of Ottaville. Our scoreboard presented by Kaleida Telephone Company now offering. Streaming TV service along with digital cable. Good luck to the Wildcats. And we see a very good look at that one, two, two, you know, full court. They're going to trap on the corner when it's right or in the sideline, but just kind of law you into making a mistake. Bounce pass through the middle of it, though, gets Audeville across midcourt. That's going to be a foul on Joel Horseman. Got there a step too late to try and prevent the cut to the middle of the floor. Could be a big thing when we get teams into the bonus this early. They're not yet, but. They've had a few fouls. I think it's miserable outside. We can stay in here and watch That's some right. free throws. So. <laughs> so we might see a bunch of them the way this game's trending. A slug bomb. Bounce pass to his left side. Turn wall. We'll give it up to Horseman. Back to slug bomb. Tries to attack towards the baseline. Cut off, though. Wanting to shoot there was turn wall, but again, immediately hunted down and not able to get a shot away. Down to 22 seconds left in the first quarter. And you know, as we wind this quarter down, you know, one thing I want to mention is on that end zone right now is tough because we've got the crazies down there, the Kaleida <laughs> crazies. I know from following them, I follow them on Twitter uh, from our golden megaphone days. Shot up, no good from Slugbum, but an offensive rebound. The Langhouse passes across the lane and they're able to get the ball in right before the buzzer. As that'll be put in by Jace Langhouse, no, pardon me. That'll be put in by Carter Horseman, who finishes with nine points in the first quarter. And again, on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard, 11 for Audible, six for Kaleida. We're back after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Kaleida here. Yeah, the crazies were going crazy <laughs> during that timeout. Well, that's... A great nickname for a great student section. I'm yep. Doug Jenkins alongside Jerry Snodgrass for this Putnam County League matchup. Tonight's game uh, being presented, uh, the premier sponsor for the Audeville Big Green, the Audeville Bank. They're large enough to serve and small enough to know you. Right now, the Audeville Big Green have a five-point advantage on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard as they lead by a score of 11 to 6. A big dose of Carter Horseman there in the first quarter, Jerry. Nine of the 11 points. For yeah, it was, and I was really, really listening to uh, Coach Ryan Steckschulte. You know, he's in his seventh season here, 175 wins. He just talks so much about communicating better on the defensive end. I think he spent 59 out of the 60 seconds on that. <laughs> Trey Landwehr with a nice steal out of midcourt. Ottaville back on the attack. He'll give it right back to Landwehr. Dribble penetration, nothing there. Gives it back to Seaver, and we're going to get a traveling violation. Feet just slipped out from underneath him as he tried to make his move, and Kaleida will go the other way. Great job so far. I'm a former coach, and I didn't commend uh, officials too much until I 
took my job overseeing them all, but <laughs> officials are doing a great job tonight. They've really, things that we catch, and you think, well, maybe they didn't, but they've caught them very well. Pretty evenly matched, pretty evenly called thus far. Ottaville, maybe a little bit of foul trouble. No, nobody has more than one, but they do have five against them. Conversely for Kaleida, Evan Steckschulte has two. We've got a foul on the attempt to get to the board, to the bucket, no shot. Foul will be called on Kellen Schlagbaum. That is actually going to be his second. That's a big component of Audeville's offensive attack there that just picked up his second. Looks like he's going to come out as Chase Langhouse goes to the scorer's table, but not before we get back to action. Nice bounce pass through the lane and a kick out into the corner. Kaleida wanted to get Braylon Smith open. Now First comes down the lane. That's a nice reverse lay-in on the feed from First. Evan Warnicke with his fourth points of the game. And that's what penetration does. You get good penetration on the perimeter. You force somebody to pick you up. Audeville's going to have to take a timeout here as they got caught up in that 1-2-2. Two, two. We'll take a timeout as well. 6.58 remaining in the second quarter on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. It's 11-8 in favor of the Audeville Big Green. Back after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Kaleida here on WOSN as Audeville leading the Kaleida Wildcats by a score of 11-8. Just underway in the second quarter with 6.58. Today's premier sponsor for the Kaleida Wildcats is Earhart Steckschulte Insurance. Good luck, Wildcats. Back to the action. Audeville got caught up in that press and still having a little trouble getting around it. Doug, I'll, eat my, I'll age myself, but my high school coach used to call that a white owl defense. And there was a commercial about White Owl cigars. Okay. That said, sooner or later, we're going to get you. And that's exactly what it was. <laughs> sooner or later, they're going to get you in that force, press. Force the Audeville timeout, but the Big Green come out very nicely and get two points out of Jace Langhouse. And going to get a charge on the other end of the floor. Is again, living in the paint to our right side from our broadcast location, Jerry, has been dangerous territory. As Jaden Smith picks up his first foul. Be the fourth and, and what the that is, Richards you know, that's all cap. just great, great help side defense. Yeah. You know, you, that lane looks open. Uh-uh. There's somebody standing right in there to pick you up. Long pass. And again, the press gets it. There you the, go. The guy on the back through first comes up with the interception. Kaleida will try and cut into this five-point deficit. Quick three from the corner, and it's good. Right out of the hands of Braylon Smith for his first points of the game. He's been... Camping out in that corner there, Jerry. They finally got him. And you really look at, you know, when you're you're playing defense, you know, how those turnovers trans, uh, translate into points. It's a two-point deficit. Now another turnover. They're trying to get back down the floor before everybody else was Brady first. The ball knocked away from him and out of bounds. First hits the deck. A little slow to get back up. Kaleida making a few adjustments on that press. They're causing Audeville a little bit more problems with it here in the second quarter. And it's leading to some opportunities for points. And then when you get that big three from the corner like you did from Braylon Smith, it just makes you want to play harder. It sure that does. And it just sort of starts feeding the beast. Wildcats look at a tie or take the lead. Nice entrance pass, shot up, no good. Rebound tipped. It's going to be an over-the-back violation on Ethan Warnicke. He'll pick up his first foul. Be the fifth on the Wildcats. You know, I never miss a chance, and I know it, it was the last possession, but... Two or three times now when players have been on the floor, you see the other team. You see either Ottaville or you see Kaleida helping that kid up. Now, they're all related, so they all know each other. But, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, though, that's really, really impressive. Cross-court pass deflected going headlong into the scorer's table. There's Ethan Mordecai. He's all right. Good thing those things are padded because he was not slowing down for it. Jerry, going back to your point, though, I can remember when I first started doing games, I did a lot of Putnam County League games uh, on the radio, and it was always fun you get to the districts, and it was rivalry time. Yes. But then someone came out of those districts, and you still saw all the same Letterman jackets there to support sure whichever did. team from Putnam County came out of that district. And now we got a tie up, and Kaleida really ratcheting up the defense. Very impressive with how they've been able to cause the Big Green some problems here. You know, Doug, I had the beauty of uh, and the privilege of going all around the state, seeing schools and teams everywhere in Ohio. And... People knew the PCL, Putnam County League, let alone, you know, those in the Ottawa, you know, Ottawa Glendorf that are not in the PCL. But people would always ask, you know, gosh, what's that like? All you have to do is look at the family names. <laughs> and so much is expected. And it's more than just basketball. It's being good kids, being hard workers. Yeah. Those are expectations in these communities. And I love them for that. 
Jaden Smith with a hard-fought two points for the Wildcats. And nearly an interception. That ball floated to its mark. Found Chase Langhouse. Long cross-court pass. And a no-look pass to Langhouse again on the left side. I remember the big green don't have Kellen Schlagbaum out on the floor. He just went to the scorer's table, Jerry. He's been down with two fouls here in the second quarter, about midway through the second. No-look pass finds Langhouse, but it's blocked. Coming back down the lane was Jaden Smith, who just swats it away. Now the Wildcats a chance to take the lead for the first time tonight. All knotted up at 13 apiece. You know, they have confidence anyhow, but you're really seeing a lot more confidence on the offensive end right now. A little separation there, mate. And yeah, I think that one. <laughs> there's a reason for that separation yes, on that one. there was. Jaden Smith got, got himself just a little space and gives Kaleida their first lead, 15-13. Audeville, they want to talk about it. 4-16 remaining in the second quarter. We'll step aside. 15 points for Kaleida, 13 for Audeville. Back in after this on WOSM. Welcome back to the Richard L. Quarterbacks Court at Kalina High School. Doug Jenkins and Jerry with you here as we are here for Putnam County League basketball and a big one. Jerry Snodgrass, 15-13. Kalina just took the lead and leading to the Audeville timeout. You've really got to like the way the Wildcats are playing their defense right you now. You really do. The buckets. You know, that press kind of forces that long over uh, cross-court pass. And, you know, during the... Uh, time out before we, when we were off we were talking a little bit about I don't forget which player it was that dove into the scores table and luckily he didn't get hurt yeah a couple weeks ago we were at Marion Local doing New Bremen and Marion Local and a player for New Bremen went off the court dove for loose ball all clean and hit coach Guttermiller oh no and I hope I'm not violating any HIPAA regulations <laughs> but yeah, that's between doctor and patient you're fine torn ACL torn oh, MCL no. And I feel for the guy, man. He he was he was hurting. That's that's painful. It's Audeville trying to get their mojo back. The lay in finds its way down. Michael Turnbull on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. That one hung on to the rim for just about as long as you'll see a shot do that, especially at a lay in. Clyde oh, nearly had it poked away as they came across midcourt. Fortunate to get that one back. What a smart move by E.J. Miller that time to wait until he was across court to get it. 15-15, going to the baseline. A nice job right yeah. there. Some patience by Ethan Wardigan. I think he thought that there was going to be a little bit more pressure on his initial look. It was even more surprised when there wasn't much surprise pressure on the second look. He buries the 10-footer from the baseline. Wardigan's just averaging under nine a game. He's already got six. Corner three, no good. Audeville out of the hands of Alex Seaver. Kalina gets the rebound. You got the ball and the lead. 17-15, 3-24 remains in the first half on the Kalina Telephone Company scoreboard. You know, Kaleida's you know, really fought back now and taken the lead, and most of it just because of their pressure. They lay an attempt by Drew first, short arms, and Audeville will get the rebound, bring it back. Turnwald passes into the corner and gives it up to Horseman. Right back to Turnwald, and again, you see Kellen Schlagbaum in there with two fouls. But I felt like maybe that's where it was slipping away a little bit. He didn't really have his presence to, to help beat that press, and Collider really feasted on that for a good three minutes. Schlagbaum, turnaround jumper in the paint, no good. Rebound, Drew Fersh. Well, and I talked about, you know, a lot of that is Collider's, you know, resurgence has come from, you know, a lot of the uh, pressure, but I think it also came from that uh, good chewing out by uh, Coach Ryan Steckschulte during that timeout. <laughs> Steckschulte let them know what was happening. They have responded. They listened and they responded. It wasn't anything that was bad. No. It was just, they, they expected it. I'm, I'm serious, they did know it. That's an offensive off the ball foul, moving straight in the paint there. I'll be on Brady first, his first. Now, I don't think a lot of people realize when you play against a good help side defense like uh, Ottoville does, screening away from the ball is really difficult. You find yourself doing a lot of moving screens because you go to screen, you're used to the guy kind of hugging him, he's not there. So you gotta go find him and you're moving your feet a lot of times to get that screen. Audeville breaks pressure, gets across midcourt. That's a nice pass into the paint as they find Seaver, but he was immediately covered up, throws it back out. Yeah, they got Carter Horseman who knocks down the three. And Audeville will take the lead back by one. And that was big for a couple of reasons. You know, one, they hadn't been hitting from outside. You know, so now a little bit of confidence that way. But two, you know, getting the lead back. 18-17, Audeville takes the lead. 
minute 47 separating us from the half. Nice drive, nice kick, and they are able to find Drew Fersh. He'll pick up his first two points of the ball game, and Kaleida takes the lead back. We're going to see a seesaw, I think, here, Jerry, as the lead goes back and forth. Well, that's another thing Coach Steck shortly talked about during the timeout. I was listening, and he talked earlier about back doors, and that was a backdoor cut that gave him that last bucket. Three-pointer left short by the big green rebound, pulled down Braylon Smith. Smith. Gets rid of the ball. Now they work it around the perimeter over the left side. Drew first with it again, extended from the perimeter right side. They'll give it up. Jaden Smith. Hand off right back to first, and Kaleida resets the offense. Just about a minute remaining in the first half. Don't think Kaleida's thinking about the last shot yet, but being a little bit more deliberate here. Ethan Warnicke, bounce pass to the paint, and that is knocked out of bounds. Last touch by the big greens. Chase Langhouse. That's a tough, that's a very tough pass. Has been all game so far into the paint or that cutter coming across because they do such a great job of staying in front and fronting that low post player. Inbounds pass from the Wildcats in the corner, but on the sideline. Thrown back into first, down to 52 seconds remaining. He's immediately picked up by Langhouse. Jump stop, bounce pass left side where he gets it to Warnicke. <laughs> I just wouldn't go stand in the paint. No, I wouldn't either. That's it's getting to be. And again, nothing, nothing dirty. Just a hard fight right. game in the paint. Shot left short. I think they should, that somebody got a piece of that. The big green will come up with it. We'll see if they play. Yeah, well, good box out quarter. that time yeah. by Carter Horseman too. Horseman cleared the way for the big green to get the ball back. Get an opportunity to take the lead back going into the locker rooms at the break with 20 seconds left. They'll play for the last shot. And for all our believers in the uh, shot clock. It wouldn't have made any difference on this possession. No, it would not have. Or any of them so far. Turnwald. Looking to run off the screen. Left side gives it to Seaver down to four seconds. Right back to Turnwald for three. That's going to be off the mark. Rebound pulled down Kaleida, and that will do it for the first half. We've played two, and we've got a close one in this Putnam County League matchup. Kaleida at home, up by one, 19-18 on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. We're back with more on WOSN after this. Welcome back to Kaleida. We're at the half, getting ready to start the third quarter. Doug Jenkins, Jerry Snodgrass with you here on WOSN. This Putnam County League battle has been what we thought it would be. Tonight's game presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken and Lima, Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Jerry, it's 19-18. Kaleida leads by one at the break. We thought it'd be a close one. That's what we've got so far. What we didn't think or what we actually thought in the first half is we would see a lot of free throws. Is, is, uh, the way it Audubon, started. Yeah, Audeville piled up five quick fouls, and we've only seen two free throws this entire game. Well, give teams, both teams, credit for adjusting to that. Yeah. You know, too, when you look at 1918, you're thinking, okay, first of all, how do you speed the game up? They're going, they are speeding the game up. It's just very good defense, and it's not anything about bad offense. No. We've seen some good scoring. We've seen a couple good, really artistic reverse layups, and it's just good, solid defense on both ends of the court. And that's absolutely it. It's not anybody stalling. No. And nobody really forcing up bad shots. The shots are just few and far between right now. Well, you look at the leading score at the half, and before Ottaville, it was a big first quarter for Carter Horseman, who had nine of his 12 in the first quarter. He leads all scorers with 12. We mentioned Kaleida can really spread it out. That's what they've done. They've got two players with six, Jaden Smith and Ethan Wardeke, and then three for Braylon Smith, two apiece for uh, Evan Steckschulte and, and Drew First. But they got the ball in a lot of different hands. And once they finally got their offense clicking, it took them about half a quarter to really get into their rhythm. Uh, once they were able to do that, Everybody who touches the ball is a threat. Yep, and you know, I, I thought depth was going to be a huge factor, you know, because of the foul situation, but really hasn't. Of course, you know, we got a couple players with two, a uh, few players with two, and that may be the case down the road. But, you know, too, I should have mentioned that uh, Kaleida is without, um, I, I, it's Jacob Siebenek yeah. is out, uh, broke his nose here a, a couple weeks ago, and he should be, supposed to be back maybe tomorrow, maybe their next game. That's Told you I'd choke on a popcorn kernel. There it is. There's the three. E.J. Miller gets it started in the second half for the Kaleida Wildcats. Excuse me. That's uh, for Audeville. I told you I had this reverse, Jerry. 
Meantime, Audeville with the steal. And brought back down the floor. And that'll be uh, Schlagbaum. Gives the ball off to Lees. Lees left it a little bit short. Rebound, Kaleida. That was a good move inside to get that. And just I think he was a little bit off balance when he shot it, when he laid it up. Right, excuse me, that three-pointer was from Alex Seaver earlier. Get that corrected. He's making a two-point lead. That's a nice pass underneath. Nearly blocked from behind, but too hard on the shot. Rebound pulled down Big Green. Also down the floor, Carter Horseman. To Schlagbaum. Schlagbaum runs off the screen set. And there's the three in and out. That's put up by Michael Turnwald. Remains a two-point game. Yeah, if anything, they have not shot the ball particularly well from the perimeter. If those start dropping, because they're getting shots, uh, that could be big. That's a nice backdoor cut along the baseline and put up and in for two points for the Kaleida Wildcats by Ethan Warnicke to make it a 21-all ball game on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. Kaleida Telephone Company now offering streaming TV service along with digital cable. Good luck, Wildcats. A little pump fake underneath. We'll get Carter Horseman to the line to shoot two. Just our second free throws that we'll see. You know, too, we talk about rebounding. I do a lot, you know, obviously, and we talked about that being a big key of the game. But I think a lot of people realize, you know, especially fans when they're rebound the basketball, rebound the basketball. Well, what they often don't see is any time a player gets penetration and somebody has to pick him up, people are immediately out of rebounding, yeah. defensive rebounding position. So that penetration that you give up on the perimeter causes so many uh, possible mistakes, you know, and, and creates a lot of rebounding opportunities, uh, you know, for the offense. Carter Horseman knocks down both free throws. Kaleida coming back the other way now. Bounce pass over the left side. Drew first able to thread the needle between a couple of defenders there. First with it midcourt. Looks to the left side. Gets it to Warnicke. Notice how spread that offense is. We're going to get a foul underneath. I think they're going to get Michael Turnwald for hanging on there. Indeed they will. That'll be his first. And team's first here in the second half. Spreading it out like that, you know, takes that help away a little bit more. Tries to isolate someone inside. Inbounds pass to Steck Schulting. He'll work it back to first, looking underneath. Wasn't there. Again, check out the WOSN YouTube page for the highlights of tonight's Stolle Insurance Stolle Hustle Award winner. We'll announce that at the end of tonight's game. Lots of candidates for Ooh, that Oh, boy, right there. now. That is tough. In fact, I'd probably know it down to about 10 or 11 players right now. <laughs> well, as long as you got a short list. Yeah. Dishing the ball out left side. Warnicke gets it. He'll give the ball back to E.J. Miller. Turn, shoots, won't go. Offensive board going up strong from the left side. First forces the issue. He'll go to the line to shoot two. That's just a good aggressive play by First. Battles to get the rebound, then immediately goes back up to it, knowing that he's got a player leaning into him. Yeah, and there's a good example of somebody that, you know, just knows where that ball is coming off. First just knew where that ball was coming off. It was a tough rebound because it was short and took that little short, you know, drop off the rim. Free throw is up and good for first. The foul was committed by Michael Turnbull. It's his second, team's second. I get nobody in any real foul trouble at this point here. Second free throw coming up for first. And that one is in and out. No good. Rebound slog bomb. Slog bomb. Rifles it across midcourt. There's a bounce pass right side. Turnwald. Turnwald. He's going to get fouled as Brady first putting the pressure on him. Came just a little bit too hard. Nearly knocked him into the bench. I think that's what it is. You know, we think everybody's in foul trouble because we've seen so much body <laughs> contact. You know, our bodies go flying. And just a second foul on Brady first. Second for Kaleida in the second half. 5-10 remaining. You got a one-point game in favor of Audeville, 23-22. That's a nice fake to the outside, then a pass across the lane, and an easy lay-in there, as that'll be put in by Alex Siever, his fifth points of this quarter. You know, that's what makes coaches so good, Coach Utendorf. You know, he's got talented players that can move, and he, he lets gives them the freedom to make those plays rather than locking them into yeah. some kind of a pattern all the time. Kaleida trying to work the baseline. A hard pop bucket put in for Jaden Smith. He now has eight points, and he draws the foul. 
And Jaden Smith earned that basket. Now that is going to be the, nope, that's going to be a foul on Carter Horseman. It says second. Initially thought that might have been Michael Turnbull, but that will not be the case. Smith will go to the line to shoot the bonus free throw. Today's premier sponsor for the Audeville Big Green, Audeville Bank, large enough to serve and small enough to know you. Bonus free throw is up and good. Well, on a score like this, you know, a low scoring game like this, every free throw is so magnified. Yes, it is, and it's all tied up at 25 apiece. Nearly a steal, that'll be a kick. It's collided, rolls out the one, two, two again. Couple of substitutions for the Big Green as they bring Jace Langhouse back in. Also back into the lineup will be Keaton Schnipke. Langhouse had a couple of points there in the second quarter for the Big Green. Schlagbaum goes to his right. Will stutter now. Immediately wow. explodes through. He's so quick. Yeah, they cleared that out for him too. And Gave him that room to put a move on. Great crossover dribble. Just step back initially and then yeah. takes off towards the baseline, gets two points. Gosh, I remember him in soccer. He was just, just so much speed. We're gonna get a whistle, I think, ahead of that shot. Foul is gonna be called against Kaleida. No, pardon me, that'll be against Alex Seaver of Audeville. Big Green, his second, but it'll be the fourth for the Big Green here in the third quarter. A long inbounds pass. Working around to the left side, E.J. Miller. Miller will give it up to first, right side now, Steck shoulder. It can be a little deliberate. They found that backdoor pass a couple of times. That shot's off the mark. The offensive rebound nearly put back by Jaden Smith. But a rebound this time, Big Green. Hustled down the floor by Horseman. Goes into the paint, now kicks it out. Here comes the three. Schnipke knocks yep. it down. Keaton Schnipke on the board with his first bucket of the ball game, and it puts it back out to a five-point lead. The largest lead either way has been seven. That was Audeville very early in this game. Ball tipped out of bounds by the Big Green there. It's hustling over that way. And that was a great job by Schnipke that time of catching that, being ready to shoot. His hands were up when he caught the ball. Feet were ready and just in a perfect rhythm takes that three. Inbounds pass is going to come from E.J. Miller here. Miller will give it to first and we're back underway with 3.27 remaining third quarter. This, bad, this battle of Putnam County League unbeatens is delivered. Now working with the ball is E.J. Miller. He'll go left side to Jaden Smith. And we're going to get a foul on the big green here. That's going to be their sixth foul. Grant Lees will pick up his second foul. Again, nobody with more than two fouls, but much like in the first quarter, Ottawa really piled up fouls quickly. We thought we might see a lot of Kaleida free throws. That didn't end yeah. up being the case in the first half. We'll see what happens in the yeah, second. Exactly. Six fouls are one away from the bonus right already. Inbounds pass to E.J. Miller. You know Coach Ryan Steckshaw, he's thinking, if we can attack the paint and draw some contact here, we're going to try and do that all yeah, night. Yeah, and you, again, you see the offense spread out a little further, trying to take advantage of things that way. Three-pointer, a little bit too much on it. Long rebound, tipped out of bounds. And that will be last he's touch by Kaleida. Him. Oh, the baseline official, I think, probably had a better view on it, Jerry. Yeah, he did. There's a good example, though, of the baseline official did not call it because it was the other guy's call. So, when you know, that's that's great officiating working together. It was the right call. You made the right call ultimately, but they did it in the right mechan with the right mechanics. Coach Keith Utendorf, not big too demonstrative <laughs> about him, but now yeah, you're going to ask call for an explanation. On who you're yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, rebound or excuse me, entered the pass, and we're back underway. His first nearly had it pried away from him. Kaleida trailing by five here at home. And the Wildcats just kind of sizing it up. They've been able to initiate the offense out here, then look for that backdoor cut off the first pass. This time, though, Audeville lying in wait and coming down the floor, nearly losing his footing was Carter Horseman. He's able to keep that pivot foot down yeah, it looked like he did, two. but I don't truly believe he did. I'm, 
And a timeout going to be taken by Kaleida as they find themselves down seven now on the Kaleida Telephone Company's goal board. 32-25, 2-24 remaining in the third quarter. We're back after this on WOSF. Welcome back to Kaleida for this Putnam County League Battle of Unbeaten. It's the Kaleida Wildcats playing host to the Autoville Big Green and on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. The Big Green have the lead 32-25. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Jerry Snodgrass. Today's premier sponsor for the Kaleida Wildcats is Earhart Steckshawty Insurance saying good luck Wildcats. All right, so we're back to a seven-point game. We haven't seen a deficit this big, which this has been as far apart as these teams have been all game since early in the first quarter. What does Ryan Steckschulte need out of his team coming out of this Well, I think, out? number one, he is going to tell them, don't try to get these seven points back in one possession. And I know obviously anybody could say that, but at the same time, just, you know, be methodical. You're getting looks, you know, so whittle it back down. Yeah, get a score. And I, get you know, a stay with what they're doing. I don't think you'll see them change anything they're doing. I think the, the timeout was more to stop the bleeding than it was anything else. Conversely, the big green starting to get things rolling here in this third quarter. Pass over to the right side. Wildcats coming out of the timeout and looking for points. Steck Schulte had trouble getting rid of it, able to get it to Smith. Smith over to the right side. Evan Warnicke. Warnicke will pass into the corner where he finds Steck Schulte again. First. Faces up the bucket. Trying to scoop around, and then he got tangled up underneath, and we'll see what we'll get here. Should be a jump ball, ball, yeah. Looked that a lot worse defense. than it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. Both hands were, both players had hands on the ball. Good defense. Didn't really buy on first, trying to right. rock it back and then go for the reverse layhead. Some of the patience by Kaleida, they're really trying to get that backdoor look because uh, Ottaville is, and right there is an example of it. Well, Ottaville is denying so there. hard on the back side, so they're trying to clear things out enough to get that back door and get an easy bucket. And we've seen some already. That's going to be the seventh foul on the big green, so Kaleida has a chance to earn some back from the free throw line here. And that's how you get them back. You get them back with the clock stopped and, you know, freebies. We got Chase Langhouse for the foul. It's going to be his third. Free throw is up and good for Drew Fersh. You know, one of the things I kind of have not talked about yet, but both these teams play very good schedules. And you look at Kaleida, I'm so happy that they played Rossford, who's yeah. very good. Of course, that goes back to Brian Vorst, you know, being a Kaleida graduate and the head coach at uh, Rossford. And a very neat thing they did, but Rossford's good. You know, and they played a couple WBL schools, played LCC, beat LCC handily. And um, so, the, and I think it might have been when LCC was just getting their football kids back too. But nonetheless, they play a good schedule. And Doug, how yeah. many teams, how many schools got it? And won. You wonder how many, I, I should know this, but how <laughs> many counties in the state of Ohio still have a county league? Because, you know, consolidation. Right. You know, has eliminated most of that. In fact, um, it's on the tip of my tongue, but a school down in uh, southeast Ohio, there's only one school in the entire county. And states with smaller populations are set up like that. But I mean, here, yeah, you know, you yeah. had so much consolidation through the years, and you look at these schools in the Putnam County League, they're all good. Yeah. And if they're down this year, they're good next year. They're just, it just speaks volumes. And look at the crowd. I mean, my goodness, you know, it just speaks volumes for small school basketball, which I love. Shelby County League is the only yes. county league I yep. can think of. Yeah, you're right. That's head. a good point. 35-26. There was the Portage County League over in Northeast Ohio, but it's now become the, more or less the Portage League for the Portage River, I think. But Spinning the bucket and one for Kaleida. Jaden Smith forcing the issue as he falls to his right side, able to get it up off the glass, rolls it in for two points and a chance at a bonus free throw here. You know, Doug, too, during this timeout, you know, or during this free throw, you know, one of the things I never hesitate to mention, especially when the DeMar Hamlin situation took place, you know, a couple weeks back, and, you know, is it, recognizing the trainers that are here tonight. For Ottawa, or excuse me, for Ottaville, it's uh, Tom Lane, for Kaleida, um, Jim Gerdeman, and it's just, you know, it's just so much that 
I don't know. They offer so yeah. much. In fact, uh, I think I'm going to correct myself because I don't think it's Jim Gerdeman, but um, I'll get it right here in well, a minute. Yeah, point stands, though, is they're certainly... Jill Gerdeman, yeah, and I apologize, right. Jill. I should know that because I've seen her before. But, yeah, they play such a key role. And I'm, I'm not telling you anything that people don't know. There's tremendous burnout in school trainers or in athletic trainers right now. And they need to be recognized and uh, accepted and, and really appreciated. Absolutely. Jaden Smith going baseline. Able to put that one up and in for two. Got his defender on his heels a little bit. And now Kaleida. Back within four with 21 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Long cross-court pass. Finds the mark, trying to get it inside Schnipke. Keaton Schnipke's pass is going to be tipped out of bounds, and it will be Audeville ball on their side of the floor with 12.1 remaining in the third quarter. And for the most part, Kaleida has done just that to get themselves back. I mean, they're still four down, but, you know, they're taking their time. They're not forcing too many issues there on the offensive end at all. Inbounds pass will come from Turnwall. Taking it hard to the hoop. The reverse lay-in falls off the rim out of the hands of Keaton Schnipke. Rebound Kaleida, four seconds left. I'm not sure if they know it or not. Bursch on the run, left it a little bit short. Will not go. That'll do it for the end of the third quarter. And it's Audeville leading by a score of 35 to 31. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more fourth quarter action here on WOSM. Welcome back to Kaleida as we start the fourth quarter here on WOSN of this Putnam County League Battle of Unbeaten. Doug Jenkins, Jerry Snodgrass with you. We've got a Kaleida player down, maybe a rolled ankle there. Kaleida with the steal as Audeville went to the hoop. Long pass down the floor and slipping and falling down on the other end is going to be Evan Steckschulte, but I think the concern here is going to be Joel Horseman at yes. midcourt. Looks like his ankle just gave on him yeah. there. And I'm surprised on that last one where his feet slipped on that, that he that ankle didn't go there, too. Yeah, he's hurting. Looks like he's going to be able to come off under his own power, but very gingerly. And we'll take this time to remind you Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. They are tonight's presenting sponsor and free throw sponsor. And I get the feeling we might see some free throws down the stretch here with the Big Green having Kaleida in the one-on-one -on -one bonus. They Big Green have eight fouls against them, just three for the Wildcats. Audeville breaking the pressure. Get it into the paint. Now they have to dish it back out. Seaver swing it right side. Horseman. Horseman trying to find a way around the Wildcat defense, unable to do so. We'll go back out to the Big Green. Now the Big Green going to play a little cat and mouse as they get it out to Schlagbaum near midcourt. Takes his time. Well, you look, too, at how they turned a one-point deficit into a four-point lead here at the, uh, during the third quarter. Most of it was done defensively. And that's going to be a foul. Slogbaum went across the lane. He got pinballed around there. Foul will be on Evan Steckschulte. It'll be his third foul. Just the fourth on Kaleida, though, here in this half. You know, Schlagbaum throughout the game, you know, you see very little emotion out of him. He just plays and plays hard. Well, Kaleida just picked up another quick foul. That's going to be on Brady first, trying to come over the top to get to the ball on the entrance pass there. He'll pick up his third. Suddenly, Kaleida has five fouls. Entering the Wildcat lineup will be Ethan Warnicke. He'll take the place of Jaden Smith. Big green to inbound. Turnwald gets it to Horseman. Back over to Schlagbaum. Extended from the perimeter left side. You have to give him a step. He's very you quick. You do, saw yes. him get to the rim earlier. Just with a quick hesitation move. Threw the defender in and just went right around him. So you have to give him that cushion. Yeah, Drew Fersh has his work cut out for him all night. Up and under move. Shot up, no good out of the hands of Michael Turnwald. Rebound Wildcats. Two great things, though, that Kaleida did on that defensive possession is they did not get beat all the way to the basket and stopped it. They, were, they pressured the shot, but two, they were in position to rebound. Turnover on the Wildcats. They tried to lob it underneath, looking for Brady first, but the pass just a little bit too far ahead of him from Evan Steckshawty. It'll go out of bounds. It'll be out of the ball going the other way. Substitution 
for Audeville. I think brings Chase Langhouse back into the game. Four point advantage for the Big Green. A long cross court pass. They're going to throw a trap out of Slugbaum. He's able to get around it into the paint. The ball got bobbled. There's a three off the mark. Rebound. Kaleida is able to chase it down. Coming up with it will be Jaden Smith. Wildcats trailing by four. Now two minutes off the clock in the fourth quarter. Pass over to the left side as they get it to first. First entrance pass to the lane. A little bit of space, and the shot is up and good for Jaden Smith. He now has 16 points in tonight's game. 35-33, Wildcats within two. And then Wildcats going to get a steal as they were able to knock the ball around over on the far sideline. Ball across midcourt. That is a dangerous pass. Yeah. Dangerous place to pick the ball up by Ethan Warnicke. And fortunately, Otteville for the Wildcats going to bail them out with a foul, it appears. They're just always trying for that backdoor pass because of the overplay on the front side. The foul is on Jace Langhouse. He's going to come up with that. It's going to be his fourth personal foul. Coming out of the lineup, though, is Michael Turnwald. Just according to the scoreboard here, that's four fouls on Jace Langhouse. More importantly, Drew First goes to the line. And he'll be shooting one of one. Shot is up, no good. And it remains a two-point game on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. Long pass down the floor, and Audeville, that's an unforced error there as that pass is. Yeah, I think we're going to see a time. Yep, yep, sure enough. Timeout going to be taken. Actually, it looked like both teams were calling for a yeah, timeout. That was a good, good yeah. timeout by Audeville, too. We'll take a timeout as well. 5.24 remaining in the fourth quarter. 35-33 is your score in favor of the Big Green. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to the Richard L. Quarter Cracks Court at Kaleida High School. Doug Jenkins and Jerry Snodgrass with you on WOSN. Ottaville and Kaleida battling it out in the Putnam County League in our matchup tonight. And on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard, 35 for Ottaville, 33 for Kaleida. Kaleida's trailed by seven a couple of times in this game. They've led in this game as well. It's been a seesaw battle. The Wildcats trying to battle back here at home to try and tie or take the lead. We saw both teams get a little discombobulated leading to that timeout. And you know, so much of it, you know, really is just physical play. And that's, you know, slowing, slowing both. Nothing's easy. I, I know as a coach, you get so frustrated by that. You have to keep your emotions within. But, you know, you just really can't run what you want to run. And, it's, and to the credit of the other team. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing's coming easy. I saw a collide of when they nearly forced the issue inside. They drew that foul. They tried to that backdoor pass. But all the way out from near midcourt, right. where Audeville nearly came away with the steal and ended up, well, now they will come up with the steal as they're able to pry it away from Jaden Smith, who lost his footing in the paint. And this is one of those games that's going to come down to little moments like that. That's going to be a foul. It's just a good job keeping his dribble alive. Carter Horseman draws contact well away from the bucket right there in front of the Audeville bench. That's going to be the sixth foul on Kaleida, though, so no free throws coming, but that will be the last time that's the case tonight. And I give all the credit in the world, you know, to the defensive players when I say this, but that was a tough thing, you know, last time by Kaleida. You get down in there. There are just so many hands moving. I just, you, you know, you're worried more about that than yeah. you are who's open. Evan Stecholty, by the way, just picked up his fourth personal foul. We have a player with four fouls on each team right now. Chase Langhouse has four for the big green. Ottaville with two points and the ball. Nearly midway through the fourth quarter here. Schlongbaum looking underneath, not there. Hesitation move again. Giving him just a little breathing room as Jaden Smith. Schlongbaum tries to go down the left side, nothing there. Throws it back out, Keaton Schnipke. Back to Schlongbaum. And now Ottaville being a little bit more deliberate. Mostly because Kaleida is denying them everything they want to do right now. Yeah, right. Slug ball out near the timeline. Again, not enough pressure on him to draw the five-second count. So he's able to dribble some clock off here. Looking for the backdoor cut. Not there. Give the ball up. Turnbull comes off the screen. Pardon me, that's Horseman. Horseman over the left side. Langhouse for three. Well off the mark. Rebound. Going to be hauled in by Ethan Warnicke. You could tell when he got that, you know, his feet just were not ready yep. to shoot. He was open, and he had to take the shot, but his feet just were not ready. And now Kaleida again trailing by two inside four minutes remaining in the fourth. Right side, E.J. Miller. He'll give it right back to Fersh. 
to the top of the key. Lob pass down low. Going up off the glass. Good for two. Jaden Smith. That's the extra pass that gets you two points right there. I thought they had the shot of the free throw line, yep. but they knew what they wanted that lob pass down. They exactly the right. They did know what they wanted. They wanted that high low, isolated him inside, and was able a good pass inside. 35-35 momentarily. Oh. Because Alex Seaver will break the tie with a long three from the top to make it 38-35 Audeville with 3.05 remaining in the fourth. You keep your composure as a coach, but those just hurt so much. You've worked so hard to get a good basket on the offensive end, and somebody gets a three on the other end. It's nobody's fault. It's just a good shot. Coach Ryan Steck, Schulte, going to call a timeout, get things set up with 2.53 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's 38 Audeville, 35 Kaleida. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to a Putnam County League showdown in Kaleida. Audeville leading their rival Kaleida by a score of 38-35 with 2.53 remaining in the fourth quarter on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. Doug Jenkins, Jerry Snodgrass with you on WOSN. Again, be sure to check out the WOSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner of the Stolle Insurance Stolle Hustle Award. We'll award that in the postgame. Still a lot of basketball to be played here, though, in Kaleida. With the Wildcats trailing by three, Audeville just hitting a big three to take the lead right back after Kaleida had fought so hard to get things all square. Now the Wildcats with the ball. They're going to again try to get that high-low. They're moving that triangle out on top, and it's not to delay the game. It's just, you know, they want to, they're trying to isolate people inside. So creeping out towards the top was Carter Horseman, and then you saw Coach Keith Eatendorf wave him back. There's a three to tie it. Or... Take a three. Take a three. Why not? <laughs> it was there as Evan, or excuse me, Ethan Mordecai knocks that one down. His 11th points of the game. And we're knotted up at 38 apiece. The pass returned to center. We'll stay with Audeville, but getting in the passing lane there was Drew first. And wow, does that change the complexion instantly. You know, when you're trying to isolate that player on the inside, though, that's what happens. You get people dropping in to help, and that frees up somebody in the corner. When I was watching video of them earlier, I couldn't believe the number of players that shot and hit from the corner. That's yeah. a tough shot. That's a very tough shot. Slog bomb. Trying to find dribble penetration. It's not there. And again, both the second quarter and the fourth quarter, the last quarters of each half have been very tightly contested. It's been harder for teams, both teams to find the looks that they want, whereas I think in the uh, first and third quarters, you could say that Audeville maybe was getting the better looks that they wanted. Well, you're seeing the spread here right now, too, the, to try to keep things. That ball caromed a couple of times. This is going to send Audeville to the free throw line. As that's going to be a foul on Brady first. He's just the victim of bad circumstances. That's exactly there. what the it was. Ball got deflected, ended up in the hands of a big green player going to the free throw line. Brady first was just kind of caught up in the churn. You're half an inch from getting that turnover, and then it turns into a foul. And that's going to be the fourth foul on Brady first. Seventh, though, on Kaleida. So now Audeville has a chance to try and take the lead from the free throw line. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, our free throw sponsor. First free throw is up and good uh, for Carter Horseman. As physical as this game has been, you know, you win with free th uh, making free throws, and you know, hopefully it doesn't turn into that, but as physical as the game is, you know, very well could be. Horseman's second free throw is good as well. We got him down as a 52% free throw shooter, but those look smooth to me. Wow. <laughs> that was a great smooth rhythm. 40 to 38 on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. Minute and a half remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a two-point lead for the Big Green. Kaleida battling to try and tie up. Slugbomb the steal. Slugbomb going to come in uncontested from the left side. Lays it in with his right hand for two points. His sixth points of the game, but they are big as it makes it a two-possession ball game now with a minute 12 remaining, up 42-38. And the Wildcats of Kaleida will take a timeout here. We'll stay right here with a minute eight remaining in the fourth quarter. Again, Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard 42 for Audeville, 38 for Kaleida. And uh, there's, you always expect Kellen Schlagbaum to make one of those X-Factor type of plays. Sure do. Right there it was. He gets that steal at midcourt. He's got the speed to get the separation and get the lay-in. You hit it right, the speed. The speed once he got that and picked that off the floor. 
that athletic ability to get a loose ball like that off the floor, that's hard to do, and turn it into a dribble with that kind of speed forward, going forward. Today's premier sponsor for the Audeville Big Green, Audeville Bank, large enough to serve you, small enough to know you. Right now, the Big Green with that four-point advantage, a minute, eight remaining. And again, you don't have to get the fastest look here, but you also want to get something good, and you want to get something fairly quick. You hit it. You want a good look. And, and that's right a good look right there. That's there a foul, is. and one as Evan Steckschulte makes a nice catch coming across the lane, absorbs the contact. He'll go to the line for the bonus free throw. Foul will be whistled on Alex Seaver, his third. That'll be the 10th now on the big green, so the Wildcats will be shooting two free throws all the way home on fouls. And that's what that timeout did. That timeout was able to set that up, you know, really focus on making a good screen and, and really focusing on everything during the timeout. But the free throw, no good. Now Audeville trying to get it across midcourt. Kaleida going to press off the miss, but there's no one over there to get the trap. They have to foul if Slogbaum goes around midcourt. I don't know if that was the intent, but they needed to get the clock stopped anyway. That's going to be a foul on Jaden Smith, his third. Yeah, so I don't think that was the, the intent at all, you know. I think there was a little confusion because you could see they were looking. They wanted to get the trap there, but they only had one person there. And a little bit of a frustration foul as it was Jaden Smith picking up his third. Well, free throws do certainly become, every one becomes so key now. Chance to push this back to a two-possession ball game. First free throw is up, and it is good for Kellen Slogbaum. And now he'll have an opportunity for a second free throw. Lee's famous recipe chicken, our free throw sponsor. The second free throw off the mark. It remains a one-possession game. We're going to get a foul on Audeville going for the offensive board. We walk all the way down to shoot two free throws. Yeah, that's No big. time comes off the clock either, Jerry. That is so big. The foul is going to be on Jaden Smith. You I, know, potentially a three-point turnaround. You know, you miss the free throw and then turn that into potentially two. Foul down? Uh, I think we had a player come in. Oh, yeah, we did. That's yeah. Right being waved onto the floor. Jaden Smith picked up his fourth fouls. We have three players with four fouls for Kaleida right now. Evan Steck, Schulte, Brady Fersh, and Jaden Smith. Chase Lighthouse has four fouls for the big green. Big free throws for Evan Warnicke. And the first one off the front of the rim, no good. You want to at least get this one, get it to a two-point game. If you have to foul, you hope that Audeville splits the difference. And it remains a one-possession game. Still, though, 51 seconds out. May not need that quite yet. As Warnicke hits the second free throw. He has 12 points in the game now. Still within one possession. 43-41. Now you're going to see Kaleida really ratchet up that 1-2-2. There's two, two. a pass across midcourt. Ooh, and lost he it. just lost the ball. Keaton Schnipke saw the trap coming, tried and, to turn, and lost it into the stands. And you see where that trap came, right on that sideline where you've got an extra player, yep. that being that black line over there, and uh, tough place to get out of. So now, Kaleida with the ball, a chance to take the lead or tie with 40 seconds left in the fourth quarter. That's a credit to Audeville, too, of trapping without fouling. Bounce pass in between the circles to Jaden Smith. They'll give it to Warnicke. You're still trying to take the first one that's available. Going to the baseline, spinning into the paint. Steck Schulte, Steck Schulte draws contact. He'll go to the line to shoot two. And you look for the Wildcats to kind of be able to force the issue once they got into the bonus, try and absorb that contact. And really, Evan Steck Schulte is just the kid you want to do that. Yep. And I think that foul is going to be on Jace Langhouse. And if it is, it in fact it is, that's going to be his fifth foul. That will end his night with two points. He'll come out of the lineup, Keaton Schnipke, and will quickly re-enter. So a chance to tie the game from the free throw line for Evan steck -Schulte. No pressure. <laughs> First free throw is up, and that one is good. Players love being in that position, though. You know, I said that, but... They love that. That's what they work for. 
And a timeout, Audeville with 22.9 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a one-point game, 43-42 to in favor of Audeville here in Kaleida. We'll take a timeout back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida, where the Wildcats trail by one to their rival Audeville. 43-42 on the Kaleida Telephone Company's scoreboard. Tonight's premier sponsor for the Kaleida Wildcats is Erhart Steckshalde Insurance, saying good luck, Wildcats. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Jerry Snodgrass as we've been here for what we thought this game was going to be, Jerry. We thought it would be back and forth. We thought it would be a bit of a seesaw battle. Certainly knew it would be an intense battle, and that is what this game is more out to be. And that timeout, you know, Coach Utendorf, I was kind of watching him. He pointed at the clock once, and you know he said, okay, we're going to go out. If he makes and it's tied, here's what we do. If he misses one, you got to get, get the, the rebound. rebound. He did not miss, though. So and right now, they know about. what they're going to do. They know whether they're going to take a timeout or not. So I'm going to bring it across. They only have one timeout remaining. And there's a trap of the quarter. They're going to burn that timeout yep. with 14.3 remaining in the fourth quarter. Again, all square at 43 apiece on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. We'll keep it right here in Kaleida. Jerry, I want to pick your brain. What do you think Audeville's going to do? I, I think right now, I think they're going to take it down to about, they, they want the last shot, obviously, but I think they're going to spread it a little bit and open it up for Schlegbaum. Schlegbaum definitely has the probably the best dribble penetration ability of anybody on Audeville. The hot hand tonight, on the other hand, has been Carter Horseman. He has 21 points. But you got to get him set up for it. Yeah, I was just going to say, what that does by spreading it out a little bit for Schlegbaum is that gives you the option of, one, him scoring, two, him dishing it off to somebody that picks him up, and three, an offensive rebound. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, Kalina's been very good at defending the speed of Kellen Schlegbaum tonight. They've held him to just seven points. Uh, he averages 14 per game. And he'll tell them, force them to win it from yeah. the outside. Force them to take the outside shot, and don't foul now this game for the driver's seat in the Putnam County League to stay on top of the league. Both teams are undefeated in PCL action. And only appropriate, isn't it, that it comes down to the final 14 seconds? So here we go. Inbounds pass, trying to get it to Schlagbaum, and they're able to. Schlagbaum down to 10 seconds left. Tries to go right side, nothing there, needs some help. He gets the ball up, step back three. That looks to be on the mark. It is not. Rebound Kaleida. Full court heave. Let's go to overtime. 43-43. That is your score after regulation. We're going to come back for some bonus basketball right after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida High School. Doug Jenkins and Jerry Snodgrass with you here on WOSN. It is time for overtime. 43 apiece on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard between the visiting Ottaville Big Green and the Kaleida Wildcats. I was kind of thinking there was an overtime hanging yep. over this game tonight, We, we said coming into this, what a great game this should be tonight and how close it should be, and <laughs> I guess that's true. I'm still trying to figure out for the student section, the crazies tonight, what the theme night is tonight. They all have backwards hats on, but you know, some look like Hawaiian. I'm guessing fraternity night. Yeah. Oh, it could be. Uh, yeah. That's going to be could my be. guess. I do not claim to be the spirit coordinator at Kaleida High School. <laughs> Back underway in overtime. And it's the Wildcats who win the tip. Drew first has been a steady presence all night. He has four points, but the ball's been in his hands a lot. He certainly is, is the floor general. Lobs it underneath. That time, though, ill-advised as Keaton Schnipke comes up with it. Well, and you know how important right now is foul trouble. That's true. Ten fouls against Audeville. They have two players, excuse me, no one else with four fouls, though. No one in danger of fouling out. Conversely, Kaleida, they have 18 fouls. So it's Audeville still in the uh, one of one, but three players with four fouls. There's a backdoor cut, the land left short, rebound. Trying to tightrope, but somehow coming up with that. Inbounds is Carter Horseman out to slog one. One of the three, now he's going to have to throw a long wow. cross court pass. Audeville just got out over their skis that time as they just a little bit ahead of themselves on each pass. That was that was a great couple moves in the offense. They just didn't score. And you know <laughs> what? Coach Utendorf recognizes that. He's just clapping his hands and said, hey, listen, that happens. It was a tough pass to make. 
Stay positive. Well, the Wildcats trying to take their first lead in quite some time. They battle back and forth with the lead there in the second quarter. Look how spread out the offense is right now. They're really trying to open up something in the lane there. E.J. Miller over on the far side. He'll swing it over to uh, Drew Fersh. The Wildcats being patient here. Looking for that there backdoor cut. There it is. It's the bread and butter. That's going to be a foul as Fersh gets the uh, ball underneath. Presence of mind to hesitate knowing that that, that contact is coming. I'm not sure he liked where he was necessarily underneath right. the bucket. Good court recognition. Yeah. That was a tough pass to make, too. But again, it's that back door. You spread them out, and they're denying that pass. You know, they're denying most of the passes. Hey, go back to one. And I've heard, you know, I've heard Coach Steck Shorty say that a number of times in timeouts. You know, look for the back door. Look for the back door. That foul is actually going to be on Alex Seaver. Pardon me. He had four yeah. fouls, so that's going to be his fifth. So he will be done for the evening as well. Second big green player to foul out uh, behind Jace Langhouse. Well, I mentioned earlier about their depth. You know, they really, he, he, Coach Utendorf said they had seven or eight guys that really could start for them. So I don't think they'll lose much in this. First free throw, though, off the mark. And this is where Kaleida having some issues. The free throw line has not been kind to them tonight. Opportunity, though, still to take the lead. Free throw is up. That one rattles around, finds its way home. And it's 44-43. Kaleida, again, her first lead, I think. I don't believe they had the lead in the second half. And able to tie it up late in the fourth quarter. Now have the lead in overtime. 2.22 remaining in the fourth. So many times, you know, uh, Kaleida is giving him that pass on the sideline where that trap is. And that's so dangerous for Ottaville. Slug bump. Passes off to his right to turn wall. He's going to back it away. Kaleida extending the pressure with first there. Turn wall picks up his dribble. Trying to go right back into the corner. Now they'll give it to Schlagbaum. Spins into the paint, and that one, he lost the handle on it. It bounced off a Kaleida player right back to Kellen, and then off his leg out of bounds. And, you know, even though he got inside on that drive and he did beat his uh, man on the perimeter, still I think Kaleida has done a much, much better job of not picking up so much and giving the easy basket on, you know, dumping it off. That's been a big key, I think. Kaleida across midcourt with the one-point lead. A minute 44 remaining in overtime. Get it back to first, the center circle. He'll swing it left side, Smith. Smith yeah. gives it up to Miller. Kaleida, again, they're, they're setting up that back door. That's they exactly sure are. What they want here. Everything is really predicated on that back door cut. This time it almost looked like a clear out. There's a cut across the lane. As Miller gives it right back out to Steckshulte. I really feel like Steckshulte was a big key in the rally for Kaleida. Yeah, that very much. Underneath, really fired up player. He's got seven points tonight. But he's been a big part of the comeback effort. Putting the ball on the floor there. Jaden Smith now will pick it up. Yep. Uh, timeout going to be taken. I knew it would be a timeout. You know, that's a good move there, right there. He's in trouble. Take the timeout. Let's keep it right here in Kaleida with 55.9 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. It's 44-43 in favor of the Kaleida Wildcats over the Ottaville Big Green. Tonight's game presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. You know, if you're Coach Steckshorty right now, that timeout is so key because you're telling your players, hey, you, you know, you think it's common sense, but guys, we're up one. We're up one, and we've got the ball. How are they going to get it? They have to foul. Right. They have to foul. So, you know, the emphasis right now on coming to meet the ball, screens, make them, sh make them good screens to get open, and uh, don't force a bad pass. We've got the lead. Most definitely. When you look at how much they use that baseline cut, a lot of times I think the temptation is like, I know that guy's coming across. I'm just going to throw the bounce pass. I think he's going to be there. I think you're probably a little bit more judicious right. about that pass right now. And this is too, you know, where, you know, fans a lot of times, I, this just shows the importance of a coach and his relationship with his players. And it's not about X's and O's right now. I'm just telling you. It is not. It is about confidence in your players and building their confidence to come meet the pass, get to the free throw line, and hit them. Because I know you can. 
Inbounds pass is going to be put in play to Steckschulte. Steckschulte had to throw oh. it off an Audeville player. Nearly yes. kept was alive there by Michael Turnwell. That was an excellent hustle play. He just could not keep that left foot in bounds on the sideline. He was nearly off to the races, yeah. though. And plus, I think he stepped out and had to come back in to get it then. Yeah, we learned in that Ohio State game earlier this year. Yes, <laughs> it can, I guess. Yeah, you can do that. I mean, you're not supposed to be able right. to. 42 seconds remaining, going hard to the rack right side, drawing contact is going to be even, er, even. Evan Steckschulte, he was found by Keaton Schnipke. Schnipke will pick up his second, and a chance to make this a two or three point game as Steckschulte goes to the line. Again, he's just been such a spark plug for this Kaleida team tonight. First free throw is up, it's good. And it's a two-point game in favor of Kaleida. And that's where that confidence, you know, from a timeout, you know, that, you know, just how you handle your players is so important when they get into situations like this. Second free throw up. And that you knew that one was in. You just knew. And it's 46-43. I think three points might be the largest lead for Kaleida. I think tonight. it is. They've trailed by as many as seven. This game has never been outside of ten points either way. Now Audeville might be playing for a three-pointer here, the way that they're setting up, Jerry. As this gets down, they're going to have to. Now down to 20 seconds. Slug bomb drive, trying to get it to the hot-handed Turnwall. Turnwall, nice drive. What a the move. Lane, puts it up and in, and he will get the bucket to go. Timeout taken by the Audeville Big Green. The Big Green trailing go by one on our Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. Kaleida Telephone Company now offering streaming TV service along with digital cable. Good luck, Wildcats. Wildcats with a one-point lead, 46-45, with 14.7 remaining. Audeville going to have to get a quick foul here. And, you know, if you're on Kaleida's bench right now, you know, Co Coach Tech Schulte is reminding them, they practice this all the time, getting that ball in bounds. Because once the ball gets in bounds, you're probably going to get fouled right away. So, yeah. you know, they're going to deny the ball in, you know, all they can. But he's really setting up his players and reminding them who's taking it out, where the screen's coming from. And they still have a timeout left. I think they have two left, if I'm not mistaken. So if you get caught, take the timeout. Well, Jerry and I have our work cut out for us because after the game, we'll be awarding the Stolle Hustle Award for Stolle Insurance. You can check out the WSN YouTube page for highlights of tonight's winner. I have no idea. Who. I think we better have a call-in show for that <laughs> one, you know, take votes online. We'll have to put our heads together. But you know what? That's the thing about these two teams. They both have depth. They both are very balanced, and they played it tonight. The inbounds pass will come from E.J. Miller. The ref letting know he has the baseline to work with. Yep. Somebody might step out of bounds here. Nope, they did not. Quickly, they get the ball into Smith, and now they're going to get the ball over to Drew First, who is fouled by Ethan Wardicke, or excuse me, by Michael Turnwald. That's going to be his third. Saw a unique play, and I think a lot of people did in a college game um, out west, and on the inbounds play, all five players were out of bounds on the end line. Really? Now, I don't know what they did from there, and I still did, you know, I sent somebody on a fly pattern. It looked more like an offensive set in football. I hope it worked out better than that last Dallas Cowboys play from last yes. week. That first free throw is no good, so. See, they're going to be a one or two point game following this one. And again, the Wildcats have not been able to give themselves much distance from the charity stripe tonight. That's a good move by Otteville, though, you know, because, you know, again, you know, you're right in it. To get the ball back with 11 seconds left, pretty good. Support the difference. First hits the second free throw timeout, going to be taken by the Wildcats. Leading by two, but Audeville will have the ball with 11.2 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Let's take a timeout when we come back. The dramatic conclusion of overtime. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida. Doug Jenkins, Jerry Snodgrass with you here on WOSN. A battle of Putnam County League unbeatens has been exactly what we had hoped it would be and what we thought it would be. Now into overtime, 47-45 on the Kaleida Telephone Company school board. Kaleida, a two-point advantage, but Audeville with the ball, and there's 11.2 seconds remaining. Audeville setting up that last-second shot. Again, you've got the speed of Slug Mob. You've got the hot head that Turnwald's had, excuse me, that Horseman's had tonight. It's really been the bulk of the offense of them. Alex Sievers hit a pair of threes, so you've got 
Him as an option on the outside if you want to shoot for the win. With 11.2 seconds left, you can't be too picky. You'll take the first good look you get. That's exactly right. You know, they're going to try to take it early because they'll need an offensive rebound if it's missed. Kaleida certainly not going to let them walk the ball up the floor. Slogbaum across midcourt. Hands the ball off to Turnbull. Looking to get it back to Slogbaum. Four seconds left. Slogbaum spots up for three. That's off the mark. The rebound. There's a shot at the buzzer. Does it go in? No, it does not. And Kaleida survives. In overtime, wait, do we have a foul? We do not have a foul. That is your ball game. Kaleida in OT, 47-45. Coach Keith Utendorf lobbying that there was a foul underneath that would have put them at the line with the one of one but that will not be the case. And Kaleida with the win moves to 12-4, 5-0 in the Putnam County League. Ottaville will fall to 13-4, now 3-1 in the PCL. Let's take a timeout. When we come back, we'll take a look at some of the game highlights. We'll name your Stolly Hustle Award winner. And more to come right here on WOSM. Back one final time here at the uh, Richard L. Quarter Cracks Court at Kaleida High School. The Kaleida Wildcats did not have a lead often tonight, but they had it when it counted most at the end of overtime. 47-45, your final score tonight on the Kaleida Telephone Company as uh, scoreboard as Kaleida fends off Audeville at home in an overtime thriller. Jerry, this game... We've said it a hundred times, but it's exactly what we thought it would be it between sure these is. two squads. You know, and you look back, I, I think it was in the early fourth quarter when Kaleida was seven down, and there was a timeout, and I mentioned about, well, don't panic. Don't get it all back in one possession. Methodically yeah. whittle it down. That was seven points in a score like this in a game like this is a lot. And they did. And give credit to not only the coaching staff for that, but the players that, that had the mentality to do it that way. Absolutely, as uh, they clawed their way back in after trailing by seven a couple of times, but get the big win tonight. Taking a look at leading scores for both teams. A couple of players at double figures for Kaleida. Jaden Smith with 18-11 for Ethan Warnicke. At double figures for the Audeville Big Green. And leading all scorers tonight was Carter Horseman with his 21 points. That's going to bring us to our Stolle Hustle Award for Stolle Insurance. Again, you can see the YouTube page of WOSN for highlights of tonight's winners. And well, our editors will have their work cut out for them, finding some shots uh, to, to leave out for Jaden Smith. He's going to be our awarder tonight but he was a steady presence all night and on a night like tonight where you know emotions are high you got a rivalry game you got two schools not separated by a very far it's the Putnam County League every game's a rivalry anyway Jaden Smith was just he was steady yeah and he was exactly where he needed to be at every point of the game we talked about a couple players that you know were made some great plays at key times and yes true and but at the same time, Jaden was just always there. You know, like you said, I think he was just a presence at what eight early on. I think yeah, you said, eight in the first and then quarter. you know, but but he was still steady all the way through, and that's why. That's why they were able to rely on his offense, and Kaleida will get the win again. Final score. 47-45. Well, the fun thing about Putnam County League regular season games, Jerry, it's always that hit if there could be a Putnam County League tournament game rematch somewhere yep. down the road. And I think people would uh, would like to see this one played again. It was certainly a good one tonight. You know, and I, I do it a lot, and I say this a lot because, you know, we talk about the shortage of officials, a lot of the sportsmanship issues that go on. And I know that I have a headset on. <laughs> but as physical as this game was tonight, I heard nothing. I heard nothing out of these stands that was demeaning to officials, demeaning to players, partly because if they went home and, you know, their parents right. would jump them for doing it. But from the adults and everybody, I really, that's what's so much fun about coming to PCL games. It was a hard-fought game both ways, and Kaleida will end up on the top side of the scoreboard tonight. Again, final score, 47-45. Jerry, always a pleasure doing a game with you. It is a pleasure, and I, we've done some soccer together, and uh, it's always been a great time and, and uh, great games. All right, that'll do it for us. Your final score on the Kaleida Telephone Company scoreboard. Kaleida, 47. Ottaville, 45. Kaleida stays unbeaten in the Putnam County League. On behalf of the crew, Jerry Snodgrass, I'm Doug Jenkins. Thanks for watching on WOSN.